<laughs> okay, it's, it's good to see you so many here tonight. Uh, uh, we will we will get after the meeting or during the meeting, whatever you can help yourself to cookies. You can help yourself to them now. Uh, everybody brought some, I guess, and we're sharing what we brought tonight. I'm talking about something that I think is named a little wrong, but uh, we used to call them trans matches, which I think is a better uh, when 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 we're uh, are we okay now? Everybody. I, so anyway, uh, an antenna tuner, in, in my opinion, is, is not really right name for it. And, and I'm sure that uh, it has a lot of different names. An antenna tuning unit, it could be called uh, transmatch, and I like the transmatch, unless it is positioned out where the antenna is. Then we'll call it an antenna tuning unit. Uh, if, when we build broadcast facilities, uh, it's called an ATU because we don't have the tuners inside the building, they're outside, they're out at, out at the tower. The reason for that is really kind of simple. Uh, you want every watt that your transmitter is producing in a broadcast facility to be radiated. And the best way to do that is have it tuned so that you don't have any loss in that cable feeding the tower. And you really want that in ham radio too. I mean, if you're trying for DX and you're in a pileup, every little bit extra that you can put into that signal helps. So that's what I that's where we'll start with this discussion a little bit. Antenna tuners come in a couple different sizes and shapes. These are two of the most popular uh, configurations. And if you get an MFJ or whatever, any of them that, that you come up with, you have a way of tuning them. And they can be variable tuning capacitors or the coil itself could be a different tap. What we used to do is take the uh, military surplus transmitters, which had roller inductors in them, take them apart and build our own tuners. And that was easier because you could tune right in the middle of where the resonance is and, and get the most power out of your transmitter, which is the goal. If your transmitter is working into the impedance that the output of the transmitter has, you're going to have maximum power transfer. <clears throat> and in doing that, your signal goes a little better. Where most people don't really get the whole idea is that if you have that tuner sitting in your house, you still have a standing wave on that coax cable going out to your tower or your antenna or whatever it may be. And when you have a standing wave on that, that means your signal isn't going through it. There's reflected coming back. And if you have, say, 50 watts with a bad SWR coming out of your transmitter, out of, your, out of the tuner in your shack, out to that antenna, you're losing. If you're running coax cable, you're going to be losing power as it gets out to the antenna. The, the goal should be, for most is to have a resonant antenna. Now there are some antennas which I'll get into later and I'll pass something around when we get to that point. There are some antennas with ladder line where everything from that antenna tuner out, including the ladder line, is part of the antenna. And a lot of you know about the G5RVs, that ladder line is part of the antenna. It's um, the G5RV was made to work on 20 meters, and it's where it works best, but with some adjustments from the ATU transmatch antenna tuner, you can get it to cheat it and make it come around to different frequencies and all that. <clears throat> now, the, the other thing, now, where does that power go? If it's not being delivered to the antenna, and it's in the, in the antenna tuner, what's happening to this poor little antenna tuner? You might have one that says that it's uh, rated at 150 watts, and you're pumping 100 watts into it, and you've got a signal coming back into it, that's being absorbed and handled in that tuner. So many times at a ham fest, you're going to pick up a tuner, I would recommend opening it up before you buy it because you're going to find a lot of times people don't regard that, and if they, if they have like a 
a, a, a tuner that's going to work at 500 watts, and they're running a 500 or 600 watt linear, then it gets pretty cool because I can tune this to a no SWR back here at this transmitter, and it's going to work out there. That power is being absorbed in, inside this unit, and you're going to find burned pieces in there. You're going to find uh, that there's some arcing, and, and over time, it happens to a lot of them. But if you're careful with your antennas and your tuners, you won't have that. The best idea is get a tuner about two or three times bigger than the most power you're going to put into it, so you can avoid some of that. But that's all I did. Now, what does a tuner do? The only thing that it really is good for is to show a match at the transmitter and trick that transmitter into thinking that it's working into a perfect antenna. It's not. So that's that's the whole thing about it. <clears throat> now the other thing is when you have an antenna matching unit like that, a transmatch, a tuner, or whatever, make sure it's grounded. Because all that RF that's coming back into that, it's gotta go somewhere. And if it goes into your fingers, you're really gonna know it. It's uh, an RF burn is not something you really want to be having. Uh, because RF seems to go deeper into your fingers than uh, than uh, electrical uh, anything from AC or anything. The more higher the current, the higher the frequency, the deeper it's going to go into you. So try to avoid that. Uh, <clears throat> on some of these, a random length wire, which we talked about before, an NFED long wire antenna, that's got to have a tuner to it so that it matches so that you can have you can use it. I, I have one myself. I have a long wire that's uh, made to work on 160 meters. Works great, but my antenna tuning unit is at the antenna. It's not inside the shack. Uh, something that if you're running a, a long wire and you have the antenna and the tuner inside your shack, if you don't have it grounded, you're gonna burn yourself on it a little bit. Uh, I, if you're running a higher power than 100 watts, you're definitely going to do that. <clears throat> Horizontal dipoles are what I, I use the most. I have for several bands. I have multi-band ones. Those I have cut to the frequency, and that works great. Uh, and you don't really have a lot of matching problems. In fact, the antenna tuner is never kicked in when I've hooked up to that dipole. No need for it. And why wouldn't you want to have it in anyway? It does a nice job of matching the antenna, but it also loses power. When you got something coming through there, if you have a circuit in the middle between you and the antenna, you're losing power in that in that unit. And like I said before, you want some of that power to actually make it to the antenna. Tuners have a, a range typically from uh, like six to sixteen hundred ohms. It's kind of the typical of the ones you buy. <clears throat> and if you have an antenna that's not matched uh, as close enough, you're going to end up with a big dummy load that you think is your antenna. You can actually, with a, a big enough tuner that will handle the power, you can pretty much tune up anything. We used to joke about tuning up the bed springs. How much of the power is actually getting there? That could You could you can have a dummy load have a uh, perfect SWR and sometimes your antennas are that too. <clears throat> now, uh, I, I randomly put notes together, but I always jump around and I have to come back and see where I am. Uh, if you have a dipole, let's see, an odd quarter wave and an open wire, we covered this last, week, last month, that there are specific lengths for long wires and so forth. And there are some uh, for, for other antennas too that you want to watch. Uh, the one I'm going to pass around here now, I, I have several copies and I, I don't have enough for everybody to take home, but if you, if you would like to have a copy, you know, I can email it to you, or if there's enough of these as I pass them around, if you don't want one, pass it on. This is, uh, we're going to call this the Tim Shingara Dipole. <laughs> Why? But it works. It works. Now, it's it's a, uh, I'll put it up on the board a little bit here. 
If, if you have a, a dipole, and these are, let's see, I, I like half wave for the full length, a half wave dipole on the lowest frequency you're going to work. And then you connect it with, how can I make ladder line? Well, there we it go. It looks like ladder line. That looks like ladder line. Then we have an, an antenna tuning unit, tuner, whatever, with a short piece of cable to your transmitter. And there's the tuning machine gara station. Am I close? One of them. Yeah. One of them? Okay. Tell us how good it works. Well, my coax length is eight inches. The ATU and everything else after that is the antenna. People don't realize that. They say, oh, it sucks it all up. But when you run ladder line, number one, anything coming back, if it does, is balanced line. You get no RF, okay? You're not gonna light up the toaster. You run a piece of coax and try this, you're gonna, you're gonna hear the toaster go off, you're gonna hear the alarm clock go off. You get no feedback in the shack, in the house, off a of balanced line. It's a perfect antenna. And you transfer, using the magic of the Pi network or the LC, through the ladder line, you transfer all the power. None comes back. But maybe, can I take a second and, and back up? Yeah. The perfect antenna. Turn, turn around and show him. <laughs> well, I like to go back to the basics, and I don't, you guys are all old hands, you've probably seen this a million times, but the perfect antenna is quarter wave, quarter wave, and piece of coax, that's 50 ohms, or I'm sorry, that's 70 ohms right there, okay, all right. If you drop, drop these down to 45 degrees, it's now 50 ohms. Now instead of being a beam this way, you're going to get, as you drop them down, you drop down more to 50 ohm match, and you get omnidirectional, so you're not as directional. I, I prefer the inverted V. And this will go right into your antenna, and it's tuned for one frequency, and that's it. The farther you go off that resonant frequency, the more your SWR, your power is going to come down here. A ladder line accepts any length, okay? I've got about 70 feet on each end in my house. I go, I got ladder line running straight up from the shack, and I pounded a nail in the rafter at the top of the beam, and that's where I nailed my ladder line there, and I took one wire, ran it all the way over to the end of the house, and then I ran it down here to the crack where I couldn't go anymore, <laughs> and then I ran the other one to the other end of the house, and ran it down in this direction to the crack anymore, and I can work up to 160. Perfect match, full transfer of power inside the house. So, but this is perfect. You got to start with the perfect antenna. Quarter wave, quarter wave, horizontal is a 50 or 70 ohm antenna or drop it down 40 degrees. Anything after that, you're compromising a little bit. The next best is ladder line. Any, any length of ladder line? Anything. This is... <laughs> Yeah, you can go. You can go 20 and 70 feet. You can. Go, it's it's best if they're equal, okay? Because you have a balanced feed. Right. These should be the best for that would be exactly equal, okay? And the frequency doesn't matter because it'll grab it. Well, there are some frequencies that ladder line will null. I mean, like no, it's not the frequency; it's the voltage. That's yeah, the, the voltage, right? Right. 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 And so and, you, there's a like this. Some people say more than 42 feet, and you won't have a problem. 42 feet per oh, leg? Of lad no, ladder line. Oh, ladder line, that's correct. It does It does take it up, yeah. Yes. Uh, God, I remember back in 72, I was walking around Pembroke. My brother lived there, and I'm hearing CW. I don't even have a radio. Man. I'm walking around, it's getting louder and louder. And I see homemade ladder line. <laughs> I can't remember his name, he lived in Pembroke, it'll come to me, I'll call him out. He's talking to his son in New Jersey on 80 meters. He had the window open. Huh? Lou Elliker. Lou Elliker, that's right. But he had homemade ladder line with popsicle sticks in it. Like, yeah. And I followed it into his house. So, I prefer ladder line, but the bad thing with ladder line is you cannot run it parallel to any metal. 
cannot run it, you cannot run it down your tower, it blows it all. It now becomes a piece of coax, triax actually. <laughs> So you got to run it. The ideal ham shack would be a house on five acres with a telephone pole in your backyard right up against the house. Run your ladder line out of the shack, right up the pole, and then 150 feet to 150 feet to two more poles. You got the world. Yeah. So that's the perfect antenna. Anything after this? So that's that's the antenna you needed. You actually need a tuner for. And I I did this. I have mine at a 45 degree angle, so I get the 50 ohms. On, on the, I have a multi-band dipole. The only time I would need a tuner on a, is if I want to work 15, and I don't care about 15 meters at this point. One, one more thing, if you if, if you just want to make it cheap and dirty and use coax, uh, I'm sorry, you guys all should know this, but I do. If you run 63 three feet and 63 feet for 80 meters going north and south, and you run 33 feet and 33 feet going east and west, you put them at the same, when I explain this, when I teach, it says when the 80 meters comes up, it sees the 40 meters and says, oh, it's too hard to get out of here. It peeps and doesn't go, so it all goes down there. You run 40 meters up, it says, ah, oh, 80 meter wires are too long, too hard to get out of 40. You don't need a tuner or a switch. And that also acts as guy wires. So yeah, well, there's, I, a, there's a dual band. Yeah, I, I did that. I had every, every band. They, yeah, uh, you can do it with all of them. All band. It, it was actually a friend of mine called it a maypole antenna. Yeah. It looks like a maypole. Well, that's the long and short of what I've got to give you today. Uh, any any questions, comments from the peanut gallery? I remember once building an building an antenna to her. Oh, this piece of breadboard. Perhaps buying a commercial version of it later. But those are like pi and t. This was, it was called a series parallel capac SPC type. Uh, mm -hmm. SPC is a variant of the T on the right. Um, which uh, Lou McCoy that was the ultimate well, right? the ultimate was a T and then he changed it around to the SPC he needed a split stator capacitor split stator cap and I turned I converted mine back because I didn't like the way the SPC worked yeah, I think it was supposed to be split stator also weren't the stators out of phase with each other too I don't recall but I didn't like the SPC uh, and I switched it back to a T oh okay we've been using that for 40 years Uh, anybody else? Anything? You, you talked about building antenna tuners. Bigger is better. Oh, yeah. Parts. Yeah. And today at Hamfest, the parts needed to build tuners. People walk by, don't know, A, don't know what they are, B, laugh at them because they're old, they're big, <laughs> and you can have them for cheap, and you can build a hell of a tuner with big stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I since I'm, I'm making breakfast for mom all the time now, oatmeal comes in those round tubes. Every time I look at one and everything else that she's got this round, I'm thinking, oh, I could build a tuner with that or an output stage or something. We used to do that. We used to get the oatmeal containers and build our coils with it. Helical antennas. Yeah. 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 Arc 5, the old Arc 5 transmitters. Mm -hmm. Boy, they have yeah. great roller inductors in there, man. I made many awesome. tuners out of those. Yep. Yeah. Any condition tuners. Arc fives, I, I've I've torn them apart. Now I look Just back. Just make a tuner out of them. I was ashamed tearing a transfer like that apart, but I wanted that roller inductor. Terry, you should on that T there. You should show that roller that inductor as being a roller inductor or a variable. Yeah. And that that will tune anything to anything. That, that configuration. Yeah, this you know, maybe we had 25 foot fiberglass whips, and at the base we had a metal box. And the roller inductor was 21 feet of silver wire, and the motor would run it on the spool and then back off. And that would tune from 2 to 30 megs at a thousand or 500 watts. Right, at, but that was based at right at the base of the antenna. Mm -hmm. I I still have an, an ATU we took out of a I think it was 1480. Uh, AM station, and we we had when I went in there, they were feeding a fiberglass whip antenna, and it was hit by lightning, and we had pulled it out and put a real tower up for them. But I brought it out uh, to a ham fest, and nobody wanted it. They didn't know what to do with those big coils and all this stuff. And I just finally I said, I'll keep it, and that's that's a 160 uh, antenna right there. 
but it was close enough to 160 meters. I'd have to do a lot, and it and it even has the RF meter in it, and nobody understood what it was. There's nothing wrong with a piece of wood nailed on the side with the <laughs> wires going out, and then have a big roller inductor and two big capacitors there. But it doesn't have to be in a nice box. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you know, Step IR wants their wants to claim that yeah. they, they're a true tuner. The antenna is because they're changing the length of the antenna. Yeah. yeah. Barry, one other comment. You showed the ladder line there with the ATU. To use that ladder line with that T, you need to transform the balanced transmission line to balance, to an unbalanced transmission right. line, which you'd have to do with a transformer or a bunch of capacitors and coils, which are pain in the butt. So the balance is the easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normal, on most ATUs, when you look inside, the balance cables go right into a into a donut. And that's the circuit that MFJ comes in. They have them painted six different colors and, and in eight different sizes, and they're all the same circuit. Yeah. Yeah. But they throw in all kinds of fancy switches and meters and stuff, and it's all the same circuit. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, everybody enjoy some cookies. That's all I got. These videos end up on uh, YouTube and it'll be on link to the uh, um, to the website and on our Facebook page for those who actually look at the Facebook page. I know it's scary, but Facebook is okay when you want to look at stuff. But uh, <clears throat> Charlie has volunteered to be our videographer for all of these, so you'll see a lot of this um, and pass them around when you, when you see them. If other people want to see them, it's uh, it's better than the antenna man. Yeah. At least. <laughs> Nobody's better than the antenna man. <laughs>